Hey everybody, final thoughts time for Eclipse. And let's talk about it because there is a lot of game here. This thing is pretty big and I'm not just talking about how much table space it takes up. But before I get into that, I do want to throw in a quick plug, which is to say that if you are interested in learning how to play Eclipse, I have a tutorial uh, that is teaching exactly that over on my channel, RTFM and there is a link to that in the description. I'll also, for the rest of the month, be uh, putting out smaller videos that are going into things like a strategy and you know which ship sculpt I like the best. Anyway, let's talk about uh, how I feel about Eclipse because there is a lot here, and I think, right off the bat, I'm gonna say I like it. I think this is a really good game. I think it's a really smart design. It is a space 4X game, uh, but there is a focus on two things. One, there is combat, and then there is resource management. For, for me, those two things are the, the most important uh, elements of the game. You know, obviously you do other things, but those two things really are at the forefront. And they're both important. Now, you can focus a little bit more on one than the other, but it really does help to be able to do both, at least in some capacity. But the way that you go about that for on both of those things is, you know, up to you. And also, it's kind of dependent on how the game shakes out. You know, there's a lot of different ways to increase your, uh, you know, resource production of most of the different resources. You know, like, if you want to go science and technology, you can get the orbitals. Those are really good. Of course, you need production in order to build the orbitals, so maybe be looking for those, but you know, if, if you want to fight, uh, you can build a lot of ships. That is obviously a good way to do it. Or you can go the higher science route and instead try and make each ship that you build that much better. If you go into a fight with someone who has, you know, six fighters, but they're all basic and you have, you know, a, a cruiser or two, but they have been really decked out, it is still an even fight. I also love how much fighting is encouraged in this game. A lot of 4X games, you tend to turtle up for a good portion of the game, and you, you only really get into a fight maybe halfway through, maybe even farther than that. This, you want to fight early on. Both One, you're going to fight NPCs. That's just going to happen because you're going to find these ancients around the galaxy. But two, it's a good idea to fight each other, um, partially just because... You want to you know, jockey for control of positions, but also because getting in fights early is kind of important. Whenever you fight, you draw uh, tiles from the reputation bag, and there are a limited number of high-value tiles in here. So drawing earlier makes it more likely that you're going to going to pick them up because you know you might draw three or four tiles, but you only keep one. So obviously, if you see a four, you're going to keep the four. And as the game goes on, that bag becomes a little bit less... It's less likely that you're going to draw a high value tile. So getting fights early is a big deal. I like that it encourages you to do that in a way that feels, you know, organic. Um, and uh, yeah, so, and, and yeah, you can maybe, uh, you can go in with a lot of ships or you can try and strike uh, early or maybe you can build up your forces and, and make your forces better. The options in this game are, are vast because you, always have to kind of react to the situation, but you're always given just enough freedom to kind of play the game that you want to play. Um, now, I will say that there is sometimes uh, your play is very much, not determined, but influenced by your circumstances, one of them being the faction that you play with. Uh, now, you can play as humans. Uh, every faction board has another side, which is just the human side. And honestly, that's not a bad way to play. I think especially for your first game, playing as humans is a good way to go. They are effective because they've got a good starting setup. And also they have decent like trade, uh, a good trade rate. But in general, like they're, they're just not bad. They're all the same, but they're not bad. And I think everyone playing as humans the first game is a great choice, especially just to learn how to play the game. But it's also not a bad choice just as you go, like it went like playing in later versions. Yeah, you can play the different factions and some of them seem wildly different, but some of them not that much. For example, the Descendants of Draco, I was playing on the left here, they completely change your play style because normally you wanna fight all of these ancients that are on the board, but they don't. They specifically want to protect them. And that not only makes it so that you don't have to focus on military because you can expand without worrying about what you're gonna come up with, but also you end up uh, like 
you end up getting a lot more of the board because of that. Um, and your uh, resource management can snowball pretty quickly. But you don't have to, to do that. I mean, you, you're not going to fight the, the ancients, but you know you can still build up your military. You probably should, uh, but you don't have to. Now, that is a huge shift from the main gameplay. And also, yeah, you get points for having all the ancients on the board at the end of the game. That's big. The Hydrant Progress over here, they're a little different from humans. They kind of just feel like science humans. Uh, you know, they... They have their thing, which is advanced labs, and, and no one else has that at the start of the game. So that's a big deal. You also start with more science than anybody else. And you can research twice, which few, not, I don't know how many uh, factions can do that. Not most of them. So they're definitely focused on science. And that is something that you should take into account when playing them. Uh, but sometimes you just have to react to the situation at hand. And that is one thing that, was, that I found pretty interesting, which is that you there is a fair amount of luck involved in this game. I mean, obviously, you're rolling dice in combat. That is, you know, luck-based. Um, obviously, and you can mitigate that by building up better ships. So they're rolling better dice. They are, you know, uh, hitting on maybe fives or fours or threes, uh, depending on your computers. You can also protect your, your ships from your enemy's dice. But there is always going to be luck involved in that. But I'm also talking about the luck of the planets, or, or the systems that you flip, and the technologies that come up. If you're playing the Hydrant Progress and you keep flipping up sectors that have tough enemies, you know, double ancient systems and, or, or not any, uh, any science planets, that's gonna change things for you. Um, you want to focus on science, but if that's just not the way that you can do it, then that's going to be difficult. Now, there's always going to be some science on the board. and You're never going to see no science planets, so you will be able to go that route. But it also might mean that you know you want to get the orbital technology if you can't. But hey, maybe the orbital tech doesn't even come up. I played a game where orbitals never came up. Uh, they, they just were never available because that's that's pretty randomized. Um, but you know. Sometimes that's that's how it is. You just kind of have to react and roll with the punches on that. Um, and it's definitely possible to do. It can be a little difficult sometimes, but you know, you generally have the option to, like I said, play the way that you want to play. It does require a shift in strategy though. This is not really a game that you can go in knowing what you're going to do from turn one and just going forward and doing that. Things will change as you're playing, and you will have to react not only to the board state, but also what your your opponents are doing. And that, uh, like that, is something you have to keep in mind. Now, some people won't like the the randomness in this. I don't mind it. Um, I personally think that it keeps the variability up from game to game very high. You know, I know that when I play this game, it's not going to feel like the last game that I played uh, because I'm just going to come up with uh, against different circumstances. And so maybe I'll be able to do that thing that I kind of wanted to do from the beginning, or maybe I'll have to, you know, serpentine. I gotta, you gotta duck and move, you know, uh, bob and weave, the other boxing metaphors. I don't know, but you know what I'm saying. So, so there's a lot of variation uh, from game to game. And uh, now I was playing a two-player game in the run-through. Admittedly, that is not my favorite way to play. I personally think that four is kind of the sweet spot. Uh, this game goes two to six. Six is a lot of players and you know the more players you have the more the longer this game goes it is a long game it's not aggressively long like some games uh and you know maybe you want that maybe you don't uh, this is but it is regardless going to be a, an evening kind of game this is a couple hours minimum um unless you're i guess very skilled at this and you know exactly what you're doing you go really fast but most players, it's going to be a few hours. Um, and you play, I think four players is a, a good mix of, yeah, it's a good evening game. You're going to play a few hours, but uh, it's, it doesn't go too long. But also, you still have the opportunity to uh, do a bit of diplomacy. Um, two and three player games, you don't get to do the diplomacy mechanic, which honestly, depending on your play style, might not even come up. I played a four player game. No one traded uh, ambassadors in the entire game. Maybe that was a good strategy. I don't know. I won the game, so... It worked out for me, but uh, it could have been that you know that wasn't the right choice. But uh, it is an option that you have with a four-player game. Two players. What I do like about it is that you have the option or you have the freedom to really expand and make uh, the galaxy on your side what you want it to be before you end up meeting your opponent. 
that might end up meaning that the opponent has you know just gotten a better shake of things and is a little bit stronger when they eventually run into you but at the very least you have been given the freedom to build your empire you're not like rushed into combat right away which you can be in a, in a higher player count game um, so it provides different experiences personally like i said i like it at four player i think two player i think it's just a little bit too much freedom but i do like how it uh it doesn't it stops you from going like way uh it stops you from having too much freedom um like too too much and the way that they do that is by limiting the amount of uh, the sector threes um that you can do there are only five in a stack for a two-player game and in a, in a four-player game there's like 15 or something like that i don't remember the exact number but it's it's more than 10 to be sure and so everyone's got the opportunity to expand their backyard a little bit more uh, which is also great if you want to go uh, in more of a turtling kind of strategy um, you can go back you can build or uh, not orbitals you can build monoliths which didn't come up in the run through but they are these uh big you know obelisk looking guys that just sit on a planet and if you can control that planet at the end of the game hey that's worth three points that's a big deal so there's there's a lot of different ways it can go and the player count absolutely changes the the feel of the game um now uh, another thing that oh yeah like i said it's a long game but one thing that i really like is that later turns are not unbelievably longer than early turns because of how the initiative, or not the initiative, the influence system works, later turns become more expensive. And so, in some games, you have it where you know, like, you're only able to do two things in the first round, and it takes 15 minutes. And then, in, by the time you get to the fifth round, uh, everyone can do a thousand things, and it takes an hour. That's not really what happens here, because you have to match your expansion with economic growth. That means that you are limited in how much you can do. You can always just keep putting out discs, but then the bill's going to come due, and you will have to pay for that. And that's, you know, a big deal. Bankruptcy is possible in this game. It is possible to completely remove yourself from the game if you cannot pay your debt. Now, that's extremely unlikely, but it is a thing that can happen. So you have to keep, keep an eye on it. Um, so yeah, there are some harsh penalties if you if you play poorly, but it's more likely that you're going to uh, just have to manage your resources and keep a close eye on it. Um, and so I do like that you know you you have to focus on that thing, but uh, and there are consequences, but you're you're not likely to just completely lose it um, you know, unless you play pretty badly. Uh, but there, but you do have to keep an eye on it. You can't just endlessly expand and, and expect no consequences. Now, uh, a couple of you watching this may know that I am somewhat known for covering Twilight Imperium. And Eclipse is often lauded as the Euro TI. Um, I uh, have opinions on whether or not that comparison is at all useful, um, whether it's appropriate or not. I'm actually going to have another video up, I believe next week, which is going to go in depth on this specific topic. Um, so I don't want to uh, talk too much about that here. Um, that's going to be over on, on my channel on RTFM. But yes, I, I will be absolutely diving into the differences between Eclipse and Twilight Imperium. And uh, what I will say on, on baseline is just that I think they are very different games. Uh, on the surface, yes, they seem similar, but the experience is completely different. And so I think it is, you know, absolutely possible that you can have room for both of these games on your shelf. Um, but uh, that's, you know, that also leaves room for people to have a preference. You can, yeah, you can like one or the other. And it doesn't mean that you think that it is just a universally better game. It's just how you feel. You like that style of game or you like this style of game they're very different. You know, it's, yet you can literally compare apples and oranges. I prefer oranges to apples, but uh, they're not the same fruit. So uh, that is uh, all I'm gonna say about that on uh, on that subject for now. Again, I have a full video on that later, um, but that I think gives you a pretty good idea of my final thoughts for Eclipse. It is a great game. It is a Euro. It is uh, 
a lot of resource management, but it's also combat, and it's not one or the other. You do definitely have to focus on both. There is some uh, random chance to it, but there's also a lot of mitigation, and it's something that you can make strategies for, but you also need to keep your eye on the board state uh, because things are constantly changing. Um, so that is, uh, those are my final thoughts for Eclipse, and uh, tell me how you feel about the game in the comments below if you uh, have played it or not. Um, either way, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you folks next time. Bye-bye.